Hey, y'all heard the ballad of Bodega Bro? Check it out. Okay, so I just moved to New York and I'm trying to go grocery shopping. And so I type in like grocery stores on my Apple Maps. And like every fucking one I go to, like I'm walking too. Like they're like this shit or like fucking like this. Like, bro, that's not a grocery store. Like I'm trying to get like eggs, yogurt, like cheese, like shit like that, right? Like, look at this place. Hey, yo, Ak, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. The Aki way. <laughs> like, you know those TikToks? Like, I'm, I'm fucking doing it. Like, I've literally been to like five of those now. <laughs> and like, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do for dinner. Like, where are the Kroger's and like the Whole Foods at? Like, I'm about to eat fucking, like, like, cereal and ramen for dinner. Like, what the fuck? This guy's real name is Griffin Green. He's a former college football player from Denison University in Ohio. After graduating, he got hired on to a tech startup called Outreach that had just expanded into New York City. The job required him to move, so this was his first time in one of the biggest cities in the world. And once he realized that New York is basically a food desert, he made that viral TikTok. By the way, a food desert is a neighborhood in a city with no easy access to a nearby grocery store. People living in that neighborhood have to either order out, go to restaurants, or buy whatever they can at convenience stores. A bodega, where the name Bodega Bro comes from, is a specific type of convenience store unique to New York City, generally having a loud atmosphere and run by immigrants. The word bodega is Spanish for storage room. Bodegas are where a lot of people in New York get food because of that food desert problem. What really helped this all blow up though was this bug man's reply to Bodega Bro. There's so much to say. He probably doesn't want to hear what I have to say. And that's fine. This video isn't for him. This video is for all the people who always say, Dutch, why do you get mad about people moving to New York? And it's because they often have attitudes like that. They come to the city, in this case, the Bronx, and instead of integrating themselves into their community, they just make a mockery of it. I mean, what, he's been here like two days and he's found a way to make fun of the stores that many people in the community rely on. Stores that people have to rely on because the supermarket he's so desperately looking for doesn't exist because he's moved to a city which is historically and still today systematically deprived certain neighborhoods, neighborhoods that are predominantly black and brown and or working class of basic resources. I know you're gonna say it's not that serious, but it is. How would you feel if somebody came in your house uninvited and started making fun of all your furniture? So I am not at all mad about somebody moving to New York. I'm mad about people moving to New York and having attitudes like that. There's comedy and then there's mockery and there's a very clear difference between the two. Oi. Oh, are you complaining that people are moving into your home and not adopting the local culture? Instead, they're holding on to their own views and complaining that those views aren't being catered to? If you were talking about a non-white person, you would be immediately called racist and xenophobic. Moreover, a lot of poorer communities can't actually have certain types of larger stores because of the crime in those communities. Remember during the 2020 riots where people fucked up some neighborhoods so badly, some stores just closed and never returned? It's not like these companies have infinite resources to keep dumping dumping products into communities only to have them all get stolen and then bring in no return. A community with rampant shoplifting is going to see stores leave and not come back. This is not some scheme by rich people keeping your community down. This is due to the behaviors of your own people. Anyway, in reply to both this and after seeing the general dilapidated state of New York City, Bodega Bro posted another video. Home then, you're not welcome here. And I think it's hilarious, so I'm going to address a few things. Number one, I got a job at a top 10 startup in the country in Manhattan, so I'm not fucking going anywhere. Number two, my first day of work was today, June 27th, but my lease on the Upper East Side doesn't start till July 15th. So I'm subletting in this shithole for three weeks. And yes, it's a shithole, you can't even argue with me on that. There's like trash everywhere on the sidewalks and streets. There's like people sleeping on the sidewalk. Number three, I just thought it was funny that I typed in grocery store and a bunch of like corner stores showed up. I thought it was funny, okay? So fucking chill on me, like it's a joke. I think people are just triggered by the use of the word shithole here, since that was a Trump meme back during his presidency. The president tonight apparently uncorking another astonishing statement, complaining to lawmakers in the Oval Office about protections for immigrants. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these shithole countries here? According to a Democratic aide familiar with the conversation, Mr. Trump was referring to African nations and Haiti. But people were triggered so much, they actually got him fired. Look at this absolute asshole. I don't think it's very flattering to have this type of person representing your company. I would reval- revalue. <laughs> I would revalue his employment if I were you. And yeah, Outreach fired him. Why? For calling New York City a shithole when it fucking is one? They brought up the die shit, the diversity, inclusion, equity. But where was he being racist? He only said that the city was shit. And that's because it is. 
I did that video a few months ago about why you should leave LA, and it's not New York City, but the same principle applies here. The progs have ruled over these cities for decades and have cultivated a culture with no standards because the idea of holding somebody accountable for anything that they do is considered oppressive by these softies. When there's no standards, why wouldn't your city be covered in trash and heroin needles and junkies in the street? It's obvious that Bodega Bro isn't racist. He's just a fish out of water. His actual crime is that he questioned the Leviathan. He noticed that the emperor has no clothes. He looked at the state of apparently one of the best, most prosperous, most progressive places to live on earth and asked the obvious question, why is it so shitty? Like, watch this video of his. Bro, like, this place is so crazy. Like, so many gay people down here, which, like, I'm, I don't hate it. Like, I'm not gay, but, like, you know, I'm all for it. Do what you want. But, like, like, look at this. I tried to do that trend on those people where it's, like, he's a 10, but whatever. And, like, they had no idea what I was talking about. But they're in the talk, so it's hilarious. Like, is being gay just like the new thing? Like, I don't even know if this many gay people existed. It's wild. Does this sound like a bigoted person to you? I mean, he sounds uneducated, sure. He doesn't know what's going on. This is all new to him. But is that a crime? Is never having met a gay person before now the same thing as an actual hatred of gay people? Most people who are freaking out on social media right now over this dude are themselves either small town imports to the nearest big city, or they're still stuck in that small town and live vicariously online because they hate their lives. Literally, the progressive goal, the dream, is to take people from these conservative towns, entice them through economic factors to move into the city, and then once they're there, convert them politically and culturally. And now you're gonna shun this dude before you even have your hooks in him? These people are exceptionally stupid. Bodega Bro ended up going on this whole apology tour thing. Okay, so if you came here from Twitter, you may know me as Bodega Bro. I made a video that got taken way out of context, so I went off private to show you guys what Bodega Bro is really all about. Also, if you know anybody that's hiring tech sales or needs a workout partner in New York, let me know doing a video giving food to the homeless. Then all right, I get it. He's trying to soften the impact of a legit online hate mob coming after him. It's cringy, but whatever. And hey, he's still doing good, so fuck it. I hope things work out for him. New York's expensive, he needs a new job, and he didn't deserve to get fired. But I'm reminded of that really god-awful woke game, Tell Me Why, that we played on the gaming channel recently. The playable characters are these two twin girls, except one of them grows up to be a trans man. There's this old, backwater, redneck-type character who is friendly but very old-school and extremely uneducated on progressive topics. At the beginning of the game, you can tell that he means well, but he makes a few remarks about gender that the trans man is insulted by. Are you... brother? Oh, shit. Huh. I guess I heard about all that, but... I never... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you look like a real man. So do you, Sam. You know what I mean. I just didn't know they could make a woman look so much like a man. I've seen a couple of lady transvestites on the TV before, but, uh... uh I've never seen a dude. Sam, that's not how you say that. Say what? Transvestites? Yes. It's transgender. Transgender men. Ugh. I'm... Sorry. It's hard to keep track out here in Delos Crossing. <laughs> the world's just moving on without us. During Act 2, he comes back and the first thing he does is apologize, saying that he looked it up on the internet and he doesn't quite understand all of these new ideas, but he never meant to be mean. Anyway, I also came by to say I fired up the Google and I, uh, I did some reading. I didn't know the difference between all those words. I mean, I, you know, never been much of a reader, huh? But, I think I get why what I said was wrong, and I'm real sorry. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. And from that point on, he treats the trans man character like any other guy. That is exactly how it should be, from both the liberal and progressive point of view. And yet the game is written like we should be viewing him as a bad person. And it's like, no, he's actually the most likable guy in the game. Everybody else is insufferably woke. Meanwhile, his attitude is just like, yeah, I don't understand, but hey, you do you. And that's how it should be. Have you seen this clip of Natasha Devon, no, uh, no relation, talking about her bisexuality? Let's listen in. My sexuality is still part of my identity. And I think probably the most hurtful response that I get when I speak about this publicly, and I get this both online and in real life, 
is when people say, I don't care. Like, why are you telling me about this? What you do in the bedroom is none of my business. And what those people are failing to understand is that this isn't just about sex, this is about life. I think this attitude is at the heart of the matter. The liberal principle here is live and let live. It doesn't matter what you do, you do you. Even if it's something new, even if there's something about it that's new to me, that's a little bit strange and I might need to acclimate to. If you're not bothering anybody else, then fine. But these people don't want that liberal neutrality. They want explicit validation. Neutrality to a progressive is just as bad as rejection. Because remember, you can't stand still on a moving train. Everything needs to move leftward over time. You've heard all this before. Bodega Bro went through, in a strange tongue-in-cheek kind of way, a hero's journey. He went to a new place, he got exposed to new things, he reveled in the novelty, but ultimately accepted the non-damaging parts of it and grew a little bit as a result. Remember what he said about gay people? But that neutrality is an affront to the progressive, and the criticism even more so. He was not a perfect leftist right out the womb, and so for that he needs to be eternally repentant. The fact that he is not, the fact that he gave clapback, meant that the prog cancelling of him was inevitable. 